This video is going to introduce the round function to you. Now there's a couple of key concepts with round that you need to understand before we start talking about the function. The first thing is the idea of place value. So if you look at a number like I have in C3 in the middle of your screen here, you'll see the decimal point is in roughly the middle of the number. To the left are the ones, tens, and hundreds, and to the right are the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, etc. The key thing to see here is when I'm using the th sound on the on the end of the word, like hundredth, instead of just hundred, that I'm talking about stuff to the right of the decimal point rather than the stuff to the left of the decimal point. So for example, if you look at the number here, I have 100, two tens, three ones, a decimal point, and then I have four tenths, five hundredths, six thousandths, and so on. When we work with Excel doing the round function, it's going to do two things for us. First, we're going to pass in the actual number to be modified. So if you look at the first example we have here, this round function is going to take C3, which has the number that I was looking at a second ago, and it's going to round it to a certain number of places. Now I'm using a reference for this so I can use the same function throughout this whole block. And I'm just looking to the cell to my right. So if you look at the example again, we'll see that if I do the tracing arrows for you, you'll see that the round function is taking in this as a number to round and this as a number to round to. Now when I modify that, you'll see that the number changes. So let's start with zero. When I go to zero, I'm telling Excel that I want to round this particular number to the exact decimal place. In other words, everything to the right of the decimal point is gonna get pulled off. So in this example, I have 0.4 as the next number next to the decimal point. Round will go up if it's five or above and down for anything else. So because I have 0.4, it's gonna go ahead and go down. If I modify the number so it has 0.5, you'll see instead that it rounds up to the next largest number as opposed to rounding down by getting rid of everything past decimal point. So round works really easily if you're thinking of it in terms of decimal point, just put a zero in. Where people usually get stuck on this though is when we start trying to round to other places. So say for example, I want to round to the nearest 10. So instead of running to the nearest one, which is right next to decimal point, I want to round to the nearest 10, which is the two number here. What I'm going to do instead of the zero is I'm going to actually do a positive one to go to the right or negative one to go to the left. So for example, if I hit negative one, you'll see now instead of rounding to the decimal point and the one, I'm actually rounding all the way to the tens column right over here. Same thing if I put in one. Now instead of rounding to the decimal point, I'm rounding one to the right of the decimal point. So essentially what we're doing with the round function is every time we do one, we're gonna basically move one step to the right this direction. If I do negative one, I'm gonna go a step to the left that direction. And if you look at the list I have here, you can kind of see how the different kinds of numbers that I'm putting into the second argument or parameter of round change the outcome. So zero is the base case. If I look at the bit, that one there, which I'm gonna highlight in red for you, you see that zero rounds to the exact decimal point. If I do a negative number, which I'm gonna highlight for you in yellow, you'll see that it's running to the left. So now if I give it negative one, it's gonna hop left one place. So just imagine the decimal point just jumping over to the left one time. If I do negative two, it's gonna jump over twice. Now the ones down here might look a little more confusing, but what's happening is that Excel is doing the same exact process. Whereas this run into the nearest hundred, negative three is gonna go one more. So one, two, three. So the next place is gonna to round to is gonna be a thousand. If you think back to your number line, you'll remember that a hundred is a lot closer to zero than it is to a thousand. So it's actually gonna be rounded down to zero. Same thing for negative four. If I do negative four, I'm gonna jump over four times. One, two, three, four. And then I'm also again closest to zero. If I make this number larger, you'll see how this changes. I'll go ahead and do it with a decimal point after the five now. Now that I have it after the five, you see that the zero position again is going right to the decimal point. Negative one is going over one time. Two is going over twice and so forth and so on. Let me go ahead and format these so you can see kind of the same look. 
So now going over three, you see one, two, three. Now I've got three zeros there. Four, one, two, three, four. I've got four zeros there. So negative numbers always go to the left decimal point. Positive numbers are going to go to the right. So if I look at zero, again, zero goes to the decimal. Giving it a one means I'm going to keep the number to the immediate right of the decimal point and get rid of everything else. Two means I'm going to hop over twice. Three means hop over three times. And four means hop over four times. So as you play with this, the key is not get, to get confused about that second parameter we put into the round function. A lot of times people will try to put in 10 or 100 or 1,000 or negative 10 or negative 10 or ne you know, we're trying to do something like that. Excel is not really thinking that way. Instead, Excel is really going to be thinking only about how many times to move left or right from that middle decimal point. If you make a mental model in your head, just jump left or jump right, I think it'll make more sense to you. Now, one of the other things that's useful to be able to use this for is to, if you want to cut off the stuff above a certain point. So say, for example, you just want to have the pennies. So I have a dollar sale here of $123.46. What if I don't really care about the dollars and I just want to know how many pennies are attached to this? Well, I can use this to figure that out. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the original number and then I'm subtracting the rounded version of the number. So the rounded version of the number would just be 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3.46 minus 1, 2, 3. Now I have just the leftover, or 0.456. So this is a good little trick you can use to get just the remainder. Now this is essentially basically doing what mod does, but I think it's a little bit easier to kind of understand if you think of it as the original number minus the rounded version of that number. So down here are a couple of examples. Because this is for business students, I think it's useful to talk about this in terms of money. Now, as you look at these, it's important to be able to translate the, the money terms into the place value terms. So for example, if I was gonna ask you to round to the nearest dollar, you would go to the decimal point and you have six. When you go past that point, now we're talking about dimes in the seven position or pennies in the four position. So if I asked you to round to the nearest penny, you'd want to go two as a second argument. If I said the nearest tenth of a penny, well, a tenth of a penny, a penny is here, so a tenth of the penny would be one further, and that will get you to the nine. So go ahead and take a little while and work on the problems we have down below.